Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our talk today is a little bit different. It's musical message of our Christ nature. So you can guess there may be a little music here and there. <laughs> our, Chris, our musical message today is based on love, unity, and wholeness, which basically are essential parts of the Christmas story. We see the divine creative process played out metaphysically in the lives of Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. As we look at each of these characters metaphysically, metaphorically, and symbolically, we can reach a much deeper understanding of life in general and how we live and create with and as God in our human experience. When we rise above the literal characteristics of the story and begin to understand the more esoteric and hidden meanings under the surface, we open ourselves to greater potential. We can apply the aspects of the story to ourselves for application in our everyday lives. When we can see the life of Joseph as a metaphor for the divine masculine aspect of life and the creative process, when we can see the life of Mary as the metaphor of the divine feminine aspect of life and the creative process, and the life of Jesus as the manifestation of love in the universe, and they recognize that all of these are aspects of ourselves or archetypes of ourselves. We can look, we can unlock unlimited potential, infinite potentiality, and learn how to do this thing called life more effectively. So let's look at the divine masculine aspect of this creative process. The universal whole of life operates in a manner to include what we perceive as the divine masculine. The masculine aspect of life is the assertive principle of being, the self-conscious, self-propelling power of spirit. And this power works by impregnating the universal soul with ideas and concepts. It is inborn within each of us. Metaphysically, Joseph, in the story of the birth of Jesus, is representative of this divine masculine principle. At the same time, Joseph, in human form, just like us, may have questioned the undertaking of giving life to a new idea, a divine idea, a miracle. He may have wondered at the awesome task at hand while simultaneously tapping into his Christ nature, his natural intuitive knowing, which guided him to understand truth, the truth that all I need to give is love. so much to learn from 
Process, the feminine represents the law, which is subject to mind, consciousness, and intelligence. Ernest Holmes says, law is an effect rather than a cause. <coughs> it's a medium or a way rather than a thing <coughs> or an entity. Having no power or initiative, or no self-will or conscious choice, it remains plastic, though creative a thing to be used, a law which must obey. That fits perfect, perfectly in the story of Mary, doesn't it? Mary did not ask for or initiate the process. She didn't volunteer. She wasn't even asked. She was informed by an angel after the fact, and it was her responsibility to carry through. That's what the law does. The law doesn't choose. The law doesn't um, make up its own mind. The law just responds according what happens through it, through divine principle. So you could say that Mary is divine principle. If we don't look at the story literally, but metaphysically, we can see Mary as law and the divine principle working through life. Mary, as Ernest Holmes says, Mary is divine feminine, is law. Law is not physical or material, but mental and spiritual. He says law is God's method of operation. We should think of God as the great spirit whose sole impulse is love, freely giving of himself to all who ask and refusing none. While all is love, yet in order that things may not be chaotic, all is governed by law. And as far as you and I are concerned, this law is always mental. So we could say the story of Mary is a spiritual mental concept, not a physical idea. But then again, maybe it is a physical idea because we have the idea from the mind of God entering into human form. So when we talk about the creative process, we see an idea from the limited realm of impossibilities, impossibility. Possib <laughs> no, possibilities. One idea moving through the law, which Mary represents, into manifest form, which is Jesus. The song, Mary Did You Know, is asking Mary a lot of questions. In fact, the whole song is all questions. Mary, did you know Jesus was going to do this? Did you know your son was going to do this? Did you know your baby boy was going to do that? And did you know this and that? And I think it's relative to us as we see ourselves through the entire creative process, recognizing that Mary had to be human. Mary was not an angel. Mary had to be human to allow the, process, the creative process to flow through our human mind, our human intellect, into our personal experience. So Mary is very representative of our human nature. She is also very representative of the law and how the creative process works. 
throughout the entire thing is asking, Mary, did you know this? Mary, did you know that? Are we aware of the extent of universal power moving through us and as us in every moment? <clears throat>
but also to realize loving kindness as the most important quality to develop in our humanity. It is love that masters every situation with grace and with ease. Our Christ nature is our gift. It is the love that dwells within us, and we are free, each one of us, to share it, to experience it, to become and live as a masterpiece of love. Oh 